If you're considering using the Glacier National Park shuttle to get around the park, here's what you need to know. Hey there, I'm Alex from Alex on the Map and I grew up right by Glacier National Park, but I didn't start using the Glacier National Park shuttle until last year when my husband Daniel and I got reservations for the Granite Park Chalet. I had kind of avoided using the shuttle for my own car just because that's what I was used to and it, I felt like it would be easier to get around. Plus there's an extra benefit for using it this year that you did not have last year and we'll go into that. This video is gonna go over how the shuttle system works first and foremost, the different types of shuttles, and then at the end I'll answer some frequently asked questions that I get about using the Glacier National Park shuttle system. There are a lot of benefits benefits for opting to use the shuttle over using your own car. And first and foremost, I'm going to say parking is going to be one of them, especially at busy areas like the Avalanche Lake Trailhead and Logan Pass. The shuttle stops pretty much at all the major stops that you would want to visit in the park anyway. So it just makes the experience overall a lot smoother than say trying to fight for a parking spot at Logan Pass for an hour or two. Sometimes I just don't want to get up at four in the morning to have to figure out a parking space. It, it just seems like a lot of hassle just to park your car. One thing you will want to keep in mind is that the shuttle is first come first serve. So the earlier you are there, the more likely you're going to find a spot on the bus. And one thing I will say is the more hidden gem type hikes, the not so busy ones are ones that may not have a shuttle stop at them. So just keep that in mind when planning your hikes. All right, let's go over the major stops that the shuttle stops at when you are planning on taking it during high season. And we'll go a little bit more into that as well because there are different shuttles depending on what type of year you are visiting. This is for the full shuttle system. So this includes all of the major stops along the way. These stops are, I'm going to read them out loud, the Apgar Visitor Center, Sprague Creek Campground, Lake McDonald Lodge, Avalanche Creek Transfer Location at the Avalanche Lake Trail Trailhead, The Loop, Logan Pass Transfer Location, Sia Bend, Jackson Glacier Overlook, St. Mary Falls, Sunriff Gorge, Sun Point Transfer Location, Rising Sun Boat Dock, and the St. Mary Visitor Center. And the spots where I mentioned transfer are going to be a major part of planning your Glacier National Park itinerary. Because these transfer spots are the spots where you will need to get off your current shuttle and get onto another one in order to go to your next spot. It can be a little bit confusing, but don't worry, you can always ask your driver if you have any questions about where you're supposed to get off and get back on again. All right, I'm gonna go over the types of shuttles that you should expect when you are using the shuttle system and what time of year that they run. The first is the hiker biker shuttle, which is used with a very small period, mostly late May, to June when hikers and bikers are the only ones who can access going to the Sun Road. If you have your own bike and you want to start biking at Avalanche, this is the shuttle for you. The Express Shuttle runs throughout the summer months up until fall, and it gives you access to east side, west side, west side, east side a lot faster than it would be to take the full shuttle. It runs from Apgar to Logan on the west side and Logan to St. Mary Visitor Center on the east side or vice versa. The first shuttle leave from Apgar Visitor Center at 7 a.m. and the last shuttle leaves at 8.30 a.m. These run every 15 to 30 minutes and they're just a quick way to get from one side of the park to the other. From the east side, the first shuttle leaves at 8 a.m. and the last shuttle leaves at 8.45 a.m. Again, you can expect shuttles every 15 to 30 minutes. All right, now we're going to get into the main shuttle or the full shuttle, which is the one that we are most likely to take depending on which time we get into the park. The full shuttle operates about every 15 to 30 minutes, just like the other express shuttles. Keep in mind that the last shuttle leaves from the west side at Apgar Village at 4.15 p.m. From the east side, from the east side, the last shuttle leaves from 5.30 p.m. However, if you are standing in line and you are a little bit stranded, shuttles will come back to pick you up as long as they know that you are there. Personally, I recommend seeing if you can get on the shuttle before 
before the last one just in case because then that way you know for sure that you're going to be able to get back to your parking spot and car. Finally, there is a fall reduced shuttle where there are fewer shuttles leaving uh, during this time because it's just not as busy. Shuttles arrive every about 40 minutes instead of the 15 to 30 that you can expect from the other shuttles. The final shuttle leaving for the fall reduced schedule from Logan Pass leaves at 5 o'clock. And the same from Logan Pass to St. Mary. All right, let's dig into a few of those FAQs I often get about taking the shuttle. Number one is do you need a Glacier National Park reservation timed entry to get into the park if you are taking the shuttle and this is brand new in 2024 if you are planning on using the shuttle to get around you do not need your reservation this is amazing news for those who maybe weren't able to get tickets to use their own car you park at the Apgar Transit Center and you just get on the shuttle and you can go explore the park. This is so much better and so different than it was last year where you had to have a timed entry even just to get to the shuttle. This means this is great news. Even if you don't get your reservations for the west side, that is totally fine. Just head on into the park, go to Apgar, and jump on the bus. Another question I often get too is, do I need to pay money if I am planning on using the shuttle? The shuttle system is completely free. You are able to get on, get off, and not pay, but you will need to pay the fee to get into Glacier National Park to enter at your entrances. And you can do this either by paying a day-by-day -day fee, which lasts seven days, or you can choose to use a Parks Pass, which I highly recommend if you're planning on visiting more than three national parks within a year. Another question I get is, can you take the shuttle to Logan Pass? And I highly recommend this. I can't tell you enough how much I think this is such a great asset to have because Logan Pass, the parking is insane. It is just almost impossible to get a spot after 6.30 in the morning. So taking the shuttle solves that problem completely. You hop on the shuttle, you head up going to the Sun Road to Logan Pass, you get off, you hike, and you don't have to worry about whether or not you're gonna find parking. You just already are able to go hike and enjoy and come back. We went over this, but I thought I would share again because this is a question I often get. When the first shuttle leaves from Apgar Village at the Apgar Transit Center, and that is eight o'clock in the morning. Another question I often get too, does the shuttle operate every single day? During the summer months, you can expect the shuttle to run every single day, seven days a week, holidays, etc. It is available to you the whole of the summer months. If you have any questions about the Glacier National Park shuttle, where you might want to get off, or any recommended spots that you would like to check out, feel free to let me know in the comments and I will reply and get back to you. I also highly recommend that you subscribe and hit that bell notification because I'll be updating you on videos on Glacier and other national parks.